Thanks for coming, everybody. I will call the January 3rd, 2024 special meeting of the Kickboy Schools Board of Education to order, and we'll begin with roll call. Please, Marla. Bo Schrader. Here. Janet Mathis. Here. Earl Wallace. Here. Isaac Wallace. Here. Rich James. Yes. Peggy McCormick. Here. Scott Walter. Here. <coughs> Number two on tonight's agenda, affirmation of the proof of publication of the agenda. I, Kimberly Johnson, hereby certify that notice of the Kickapoo Area School District <coughs> Special School Board meeting was caused to be published in the Epitaph News and posted on billboards on the following places on 12 27 23. The Kickapoo K 12 School Building, Citizens First Bank in Viola, and the Viola Post Office. Thank you, Kim. I'll uh, entertain a motion then to approve tonight's short but very important agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. Motion by Earl, second by Bo to approve tonight's agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item four, then, audience, visitors, and board members. And it looks like we do have two folks. And up first, Adrian Amos. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Adrian Amos. And first of all, thanks for your time this evening uh, to address the board. Uh, as a way of introduction, my wife and I uh, reside in the town of Liberty, and we purchased our farm in 2000 and been residents of the Cape Area School District for 23 years. Uh, my uh, background or education uh, was I grew up in Wisconsin. I'm a product of the Wisconsin school system, grade school, middle school, high school, and college, and value uh, a great education. I always have, always do. And my wife and I also recently set up scholarships, two scholarships for the Cape Area Schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, in our backgrounds. I'm a technology background and my wife's a healthcare background. So the past two years we've done that. Uh, I met with Kimberly on Friday. I appreciate that. We had a very nice discussion and I wanted to come up to speed on this uh, operational referendum. And she shared with me some of the charts and some of her insights. I studied it quite a bit this weekend and this is why I'm here to address you. And I wanted to share uh, a number of summary points, probably about six of them. So I went through my top property tax bill the past 23 years, and on average, give or take 5%, about half of it goes to the Kickapoo area schools, 20% goes to the county, 20% goes to the tech school, 10% goes to the town or village. Like I said, this year it's about 43, 44% of Kickapoo, so it varies. But what we're discussing here is material uh, for the people that are paying the tax. So that's point number one. I'm gonna challenge the rationale for the word recurring operational re referendum uh, that has no end date and is basically in perpetuity, okay? I've seen different numbers, uh, 1.5 million, 1.6, and there's recurring and non-recurring. But the notion with no end date that basically doubles our tax levy from about 1.997 million today to nearly 4 million in four years is significant. That's basically doubling our tax levy and our mill rate on a clip of about 20% year on year for four consecutive years. And then it goes on at that rate. Okay, so I'm gonna go into more detail in a bit. Historically, we've operated, I went through since 2002, we've historically operated around 1.7 to $2 million tax levy with, uh, student pupil population between 471 and 538. So it looks like we're geared for around 500 students that I've looked at the last 10 years. Like I said, this referendum increases the tax levy by nearly 20% per year over four consecutive years. Sometimes it's 16, sometimes it's 10. One of them was 30%, the mill rate that I was looking at. And I was looking at the $1.5 um, million dollar one that I think was, 350, 350, 350, 350. These are pretty high percentages. 
for people that have to pay it, the sole proprietors, business owners, and individuals. And uh, as a population ages, that's the other thing I want to raise here. You know, we, we have two challenges here. We have declining enrollment, but we also have an aging population who are on fixed income, some of them, as they get on Social Security. And it becomes increasingly more difficult to absorb <coughs> these costs. I was on the county board for eight years. I served six years on our senior services and aging, and I went to meal sites and home delivered meals and met with seniors, farmers, ladies that lost their husband and that they don't get much social security and their kids were actually helping them pay the property tax because they wanted to stay on the farm. So it's a big issue <laughs> that's used on both ends, seniors and pubert students. When revenues are flat, at least from my background, it's not sustainable to double expenditures. <laughs> it just doesn't, at least it doesn't operate like that the way I come from my background. And let me illustrate with a couple examples. In my career, I was a general manager and I was responsible for all operations, profit and loss for a network security business unit. If my revenues were projected to be flat, there was no way I could increase my expenses let alone potentially AK levy 2X. It just doesn't work like that. Let me know, give you another example. I own a rental property in the Kikuku Area School District. Two of those kids go to the school that they lease my rental property. It wouldn't be fair for me to raise their rent 20% next year, 20% the next year, 20% the next year, and 20%. That's not nice. I wouldn't do that. Okay, now these are sort of oversimplified examples, but I'm trying to illustrate a point here that this is a big number going from one point or two million to four million in the next four years and keeping it steady. Next, what actions have been taken to reduce costs, consolidate operations, explore other approaches before you go to referendum? Okay, and what I would say, I particularly liked how we did this proactively when we did the pool. You sent surveys out before the referendum. You solicited feedback from people and asked for trade-offs and options and different things. You factored all that in before we went to referendum. I'm not aware that we've sent any surveys out or solicited feedback from the people that are going to actually be paying this. So it's just something that I really liked what we did on the pool. Okay. Lastly, as you know, I'm struggling with the notion of re reoccurring referendum because that's basically a blank check goes out indefinitely, okay? I'm open to short-term non-reoccurring options. And as I shared with Kimberly, you know, we clearly have, I'm not, you know, we have a, a shortfall here, we have to make up. So, you know, I wanna be part of the solution and different things like that, not to say no, okay? But the point is, is why not do two, three, four years, you get started. A lot can change in four years at the state level, at the local level, you know, there's a lot of unknowns we don't know. And then we could also work on, you know, options with our, our uh, public, the people, you know, our residents. And if we had to make trade-offs and options in year four or five, we could go look at different things then. I just don't like saying, well, <coughs> enrollment's going down, we're just gonna put it at four and let her rip, okay? I would rather take it to board or challenge the board, and this would be my final thing. I would challenge the board to keep an open mind to trying to address this and other recurring referendum while engaging the public and being part of the solution. So I'm not against a referendum. I have some heartburn over reoccurring because it's a big number as I illustrated. We're going to basically go from two to four million on a flat to declining enrollment. But historically, we've been able to do it as a school district on two million past 10 to 15 years. Now, I know our bill rate's about 6% right now. It's lower than the state average. I believe the state average is about eight, 7.6 or 7.7. .7. So I understand we need to come up, but this new mill rate would put us at about 10.3 in four years, which would be above the state average. So I thank you for your time. Appreciate your consideration to some of my inputs. If you have any questions, I'll stay as long or after the meeting, but thanks again for giving me the opportunity to meet with Kimberly as well as address the sport. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Good points. Appreciate the time. Next up, Doug Olson. 
Yeah, um, thank you. I said a couple of things I wanted to, I guess, discuss or remind the board about. Um, in the context of the discussions about referendum, you guys have been provided many documents that demonstrate the constraints that school district revenue limits have been under for the past 13 years. Um, with that, without increasing student enrollment, districts across the state are relying on operational referendums to fund their local schools, which is evidenced by the data that you've reviewed. While cost cutting is an important facet of school board duty, so is providing an adequate education for the students who live and choose to attend school here. Regarding open enrollment, you know, if we start looking at cost cutting, cutting programs can have a deleterious effect on your open enrollment. It can actually re uh, reduce revenues uh, through declining open enrollment. So the board has many considerations as it moves towards a possible referendum. Community members who paid attention long enough know this day is coming. At every annual meeting since 2017, we have spoken about declining elementary population and what that's going to mean to this district. At every open public pool meeting, we spoke about the eventual need for an operating referendum so that we were open and honest with the taxpayers about what our district needs were. Many infrastructure needs have been addressed over the last 12 years, but these are also ongoing in a 130,000 square foot building. You've got operating equipment, controls, roofs, buses, none of these things last forever. The school district has levied less for operating expenses in 23-24 than it did in 2011. Once you take out the cost of private school voucher payments, which taxpayers are paying for directly through additional property tax payments. Additionally, our minimum annual pool payment is included in this levy comparison. So when you take out the 162,000 for the pool and 100,000 for vouchers, we're far below where we were in 2011 on a percentage basis. People in our community that wanted to build a larger pool with larger operating expenses and increased annual and annual payments should also have seen this day coming because they were repeatedly warned that our student population has been declining. There are few schools that can withstand a drop of 70 students over a six year time frame and have not already gone to an operating refer uh, referendum for additional revenue. I would simply ask that the board not look at this as a one-time vote. Each year, examine your taxing authority, your staffing levels based on a multitude of variables that impact local taxation. Membership, open enrollment, your voucher enrollment, your state aid, and your revenue limit increases all come to my mind. If the referendum for whatever amount passes, the board and administration and community must still look at expenses, staffing ratios, student needs, and the resultant tax increases to come to a final conclusion on the levy at the annual meeting. Additionally, perhaps it's time the district utilize some of the Griffin funds that we've saved for allowable expenses to mitigate taxation increases down the line. We saved money for a rainy day and it's poor. Personally, I pay approximately 25% less in school taxes in 2023 than I did in 2011. This will not necessarily be the case for every homeowner in every township and municipality, but it is for me. And relatively speaking, we have the lowest mill rate in 23-24 in the entire CESA, which is 31 school districts. The mean of these 31 districts is 797. You're all keenly aware of the difficulty that the district has in recruiting highly qualified teachers for open position. Our children deserve no less of an opportunity than the children who live in other zip codes where land wealth makes operational referendums pass very easily, or in zip codes where there's increased construction and thus increased student counts, which help fund their school. These are very difficult decisions that require the balance of students' needs with the continuing community support for our school. And you are all tasked with finding that balance. One of the things I think that can be relevant is sort of looking at what schools are doing around us which I guess just provides relevance. There are a number of schools that are operating underneath recurring referendums or non-recurring referendums or schools that are going to referendum this year as we are or are planning to. DeSoto is in planning stages right now with their school board. They've had multiple meetings. Hillsborough has a non-recurring referendum for four years for 750,000 passed in 2022. North Crawford has a recurring past in 2022. Richland 
um, has a recurring referendum that's passed. Riverdale has a 20-year referendum for 7.9 million. The first five years at 715,000, next 15 at 315,000. Broco has a five-year that they're operating under passed in 2020. Wazika has one that was passed in 2022 at 950,000 a year for four years. Westby is in the last year of theirs and they're planning to go back again. They went last year for three years at 1.9 million for each year. West in 2021, four years, 975,000 a year passed in 2021. We are not alone. This is a situation the state has created and we are declining rural school district like most of the districts in the state that are rural. And there aren't a lot of easy solutions. And with that, I wish you a happy new year because this is a really difficult thing to do. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Thank yeah. you both for coming tonight. Yep. Good input, good input. All right, we'll move on to <laughs> The reason for tonight's special meeting, the two items on the action agenda, I'll read each and then open the table up for discussion. Should anybody like to dive into the, <coughs> the text itself? Uh, but item A, resolution authorizing the school district budget to exceed revenue limit for recurring purposes. Any discussion? Assume everybody had a chance to read the resolution itself. It's the first one in this packet that was at my spot, right? Mm -hmm. Why did this one? Let me make sure I got this right. So just to say, yes, we are going to be. Uh, Exceeding the revenue limit for the current purposes, and it is not listing any amounts or approving a specific question. That's the next step. That's right. Okay. okay. Any other thoughts or questions regarding this resolution? If none, then I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Janet, second by Isaac to approve. And we'll do a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Janet Mathis? Yes. Bro Wallace? Yes. Isaac Wallace? Yes. Rich Jaynes? Yes. Peggy McCormick? Yes. Bo Schrader? Yes. Scott Walter? Yes. Item two then. And again, I'll read the summary in the agenda and if we'd like to have discussion on the information in the packet fine but it reads resolution providing for a referendum election on the question of the approval of a resolution authorizing the school district budget to exceed revenue limit for recurring purposes Do we want to have some discussion before we actually talk about a motion that has specific numbers in it, or do we want to have a motion on the floor and then I think it's more usual to have a motion on the floor and then we can go for this way. Take that. Is there like a little discussion? Yo, but but, but, there's going to be let's, discussion at some point. I just, yeah. I just want to know what you were picturing there. So I'll entertain a motion to approve. And so we're making a motion to approve what's on the results. I'll make a motion to approve this. Um, the resolution is, is indicated on page in the packet. $400 recurring. $400,000 recurring. <laughs> Is there a second? Oh. What was that, Rich? I will second it. Okay, motion by Isaac, second by Rich to approve. 
the resolution. Any discussion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where to exactly start. First of all, because we didn't have any discussion on the other motion, I just wanted to say um, I share Amy's, you know, gut level reaction on my part. I get two uh, recurring referendums. I, I always I kind of felt, I don't know if I won't try to say this as soon as you, but I always kind of felt like why should one group, one population at one moment in time set up a tax that goes on in perpetuity. It just didn't seem right. But when we started looking at these forecasts and the difference between the 350, at that time we were looking at the 350 thing, 350,000 as recurring versus the same sort of thing done non-recurring with different amounts in the years. I, I still don't quite understand how the state funding works and how exactly all the declining enrollment comes to play in, but it just didn't make sense to, and I'm really still a bit struggling with it, but it really seemed to make more sense, a lot more sense that we have to go recurring. So with that said, I don't, yeah, well, you know, I'm not arguing with the recurring part, but. At the end of the non-recurring, we're just left with that $2 yeah. million dollar cliff. That all right. of a sudden Exactly. So we have to, I think the most important for us thing for us is to come up with a recurring referendum with amounts <laughs> that we are pretty sure we can pass. We, we're going to have to work at it, but we've got to have something realistic that we can pass because in four years down the line, exactly. I don't want a board sitting here then that if they can't pass a referendum, they're kind of stuck like Westby is now when theirs failed. You go back to zero. So not only you need more than the 400,000 even, but if you can't get something, you're back to where you were four years ago. You're not even, you're in the whole $400,000, so to speak. So yeah, now whether it's gonna, whether it should be 400 and it should be 400,000 all the time so that at the end, and that's the part, and I guess we've always kind of prided ourselves on being transparent about things with taxpayers and communication with the public. And if you just say a $400,000 recurring referendum, I mean, that, that sounds okay. I mean, that sounds great, but, but, what I did not understand at first when we started talking about this that we we're asking for is 400,000 one year, 800,000. That's why when this was first brought up in November and Melissa's saying this, I'm like, no, that can't be. These numbers just don't make sense because then why isn't there more money here in this? If the second year we're taxing for 800, that should be higher there for revenue and so on. And then the next year we're taxing for 1.2 million and then in the fourth year, 1.6 million. That, those numbers, I'm, I'm old, they just sound horrendously large, you know? And, and I don't know what, what we're asking people for and, and I still, you know. Well, the other thing I, I think, point of clarification I wanna just kind of illuminate here is when we talk about a 20% year over year, I mean, that's just looking at what the levy is, today versus what the increase is. It's not a 20% increase to the funding for the school. If we look at the amount of increase that is to a school's budget year after year, we are less than a 5% increase year after year to the total money that will be available to run the school. And 5%, you know, historically, you know, inflation is way beyond that. The cost to do business is way beyond that. And this isn't a business where we can sell more something to get more money. This is a school where you have to educate and all we can do is I mean, get the funding source from where it's available. If the state was providing more money to offset the local taxpayers, then that'd be great, but that's not the case. You know, as we look at this, we've made projections, you know, all the other amounts that we've looked at leave us in a deficit mm -hmm. or we're cutting positions that then, okay. then we lose students, which as Doug brought up, has another negative impact that also hurts our income ability. So as we look at these different values, I don't see another option in front of us that funds the school. This is without adding position. It funds the schools in a way that keeps the teachers with enough resources to educate our students. And, and is still as responsible as we possibly can be when we look at mill rates historically. The end of, our, the end of this four year reoccurring referendum, puts our mill rate equal to where we were back in 2011, as far as the mill rate goes. And I understand that's not dollars to dollars, 
but as a mill rate, that's that's flat to where we were in 2011. So I, I mean, I just I don't see any other option. I wish I wish we did, but unfortunately, this is where we're at. Janet, one thought is you were talking about transparency. Mm -hmm. It's right in the question. Out. So I, I it's it's I think it's clear in the question that yeah. it was when we first started right. discussing this. Um and those are big numbers and the concerns that Adrian brought up and you sort of <laughs> emphasized again are real. I mean, most folks around here saw their property taxes go up this year. Mm -hmm. Not, so, not tremendously as much as I thought I would. Well, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was because of tax credits, which you know, will we'll be there next year. An important point, though, is that although this authorizes an increase of $400,000 per year, maybe an important point to communicate in the way I'm starting to think about this more, that's the ceiling. And decisions about how much to levy our annual decisions, right? When we finally get the budget, mm -hmm. yep. we don't need, you know, it's not necessarily a $1.6 million. It might not be, but yeah. or it might be some years and it might not be other years because that's going forward after that. So in a way that in my mind, as I'm starting to wrestle with this, that that allows, given the fact I think we're all pretty fiscally conservative folks and you know, always have our eye on the bottom line that offers us sort of a, a self-correcting mechanism that makes the difference between a recurring and non-recurring referendum less troublesome for me right because you're you're deciding what to oh. levy every year yeah i well you agree, <laughs> but i it's just that yeah, well, I, i've gotten over my i've had to get over looking just looking at the numbers yeah. my reluctance to look at recurring. Yeah. And the schools that did recurring. Oh, I'm sorry, Janet, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Rich. No, I, I was gonna say the same thing Scott did, that I mean, this gives us an upper limit. If things change in two years, four years, then I think the board, you know, like Doug said, the board's have been very good stewards of taxpayer money, doing everything we can to provide a good education at the lowest cost <clears throat> possible. And, and I would say, you know, our track record, record shows that and we would continue to do that. So again, it's a ceiling that's there, but I would hope we, as a board, we'd be, continue to be good stewards of taxpayers' money and only tax what we need. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I don't argue with anything Doug said or what Isaac said about cutting programs. I agree. I think Scott mentioned that too. We we can't really cut. It's not uh, it, it's not like we're producing a product and we can choose or really control. We don't really control much of our expenses even. I mean, we we get to tax what the state tells us we can basically, mm -hmm. and tells us we have to, and then keeps it instead of for the private school instead of getting to us and things like that. But but we don't we don't have a lot of control over that. I I agree and I don't think we we can't cut very many things. I we talked mentioned, you know, if we cut a for example, if we cut a 4K program, we lose more than we're gonna gain. Plus it's just a good thing to do for our students. So I don't argue with any of that and you know if if we could when this would pass, I, I guess it would be fine because your, your statement was, and I didn't write it down, we have to get the money where we can. And apparently the only thing we're finding is the taxpayers. So if that's what we have to try to do, we do that. So, or what else would you say? It just to think of, and I guess I didn't, I looked at mill rate, but you know, when I think about the mill rate practically doubles, it's my property tax doubles in four years. Um, you said something about the Griffin phones. Can someone explain to me? You, can you explain to me or someone what what you're meaning by that? Maybe because I just haven't been on the board long enough to understand all of it. But so we have money sitting that's in the Griffin fund that we use. We just have 
So the Griffin's annual disbursement is about 128,000 give or take, depending upon the year they tell us every year in May. And then we have to provide them the eligible expenses that um, would be associated with the allowable um, expenses that are outlined in his will from 50 years ago. Um, over time, what we've been able to do, if, uh, especially during the years where we were increasing, you know, from 2010 until 2017, we were increased, 16, 17, we were increasing our student enrollment, which spends off extra revenue, which allows you to do infrastructure projects, which we tried to do so that we wouldn't have to tax them later, it was included. Um, it, when times are really good, you get to the end of the year and some expenses we might have coded to Griffin money. If we had fund 10 money, we would back code it because if you don't spend your fund 10 money, you don't get aid on it. Right. So you lose your aid. So we put it back into 21. So we built up a balance of Griffin money um, that is sitting there that is different than the money that was paid out to the district uh, from the settlement of Lee Griffin's will. That's a different pot. So we have two pots of money. We have money that we've stored in Griffin money and we have Lee Griffin's money that we actually have invested in big scholarships on. Right. So there is a, a fairly sizable dollar amount um, that annually we could discuss using for the purposes that are outlined in this will to mitigate tax increases. And whether that's best done toward the end of the four years or annually, that's really not my role anymore. But I would just urge you to be mindful of that. Um, and you'll probably see me at the annual meeting. I'll remind you again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to that point, that's something that can be discussed on a year over year basis. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. As discussed this being the ceiling as a way to kind of keep our actual tax below what the ceiling would be. Yes. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily a plan for four years, but a backup. No, it's, it's yes, year by year. Yeah. Exactly. It might take it might take some of the shock off of the larger end of those numbers. <clears throat> but again, that's not an endless pit of money either. Right. You know, it's saved and it, it allows you to mitigate, but also it might get you to the point where some of our debt is paid off and then comes down, which is relief for the taxpayers, which I believe is 2029 on the HVAC equipment. Um, and then the pool is going to be fairly close in line with that based on the advanced payment structure that we pursued. The pool will be paid off the year before the HVAC system. I think it's 27, 28. So now that got mentioned too, if we if this referendum were to pass in April, we were looking at for the years of 24, 25, 5, 26, 26, 27, 27, 28. Which then we would be at the 1.1 1. 1 or 1.4 million. But we have debt coming off. That we have we have the pool debt coming off, I believe, at the end of 27, 28, and then the HVAC, the bonds are done the next year. Okay. And that was so the bonds will come. Okay. But so, that was figured into your model, right? It is in there, yes. So but but, but, but like, it's it's kind of at the end of those four years, mm -hmm. right? This one that starts happening. So we need to go that high if we know that the year after this, we already have some debt coming off. Can I say something? Sorry. We levy extra for the debt. That is outside of the revenue limits. So I know, but in okay. terms of what the taxpayer pays, yeah, it's in a different, there's the fund 10 levy and there's the debt service levy. But when money's gone here, that doesn't mean we have to keep raising this because if we're not spending money for debt, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Separate. But we have to be able to levy it somewhere. It'll, right? it'll, it'll provide it. activity, yeah. but it doesn't help with our operations. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, we have. What it got over a million is where, where you got me, to be honest. <laughs> And I looked at ref. I looked at the referendum database today and went through there. And recurring is more and more common. The passing failing, honestly, yeah, more recurring fails than non-recurring, but not tremendously. And that's getting closer. 
what matters is the amount of money. What matters more than whether it's recurring or non-recurring is that number of attendees. Well, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think the non-recurring also just pushes a problem to another. I'm, I'm not saying go non-recurring. In fact, we already said we already passed a motion, passed a motion that said it's going to be recurring. Sure. Okay. But so I'm not arguing with that. But still, that amount of money at the end where they show the amounts per year and that it's at the end it's at 1.6 million. It's I don't know. But you know, the totally honest again, Doug listed some of them that were more than a million, and North Crawford's one that was passed in 22 ends up at 900,000. You can't get much closer to a million at all. So they passed it and they passed the capital referendum at the same time. More than what Lafarge was, Wazika has, uh, oh no, this was not. Difficult issue, but we still sit here, I think, with a motion on the table to approve with no amendments. <coughs> Good discussion, but nothing that's changed the nature of the motion. Any other thoughts or discussion? Then I think we'll move to a roll call vote, Marla. Earl Wallace. Yes. Isaac Wallace. Yes. Rich James. Yes. Peggy McCormick. Yes. Bo Schrader. Yes. Janet Mathis. Yes. And Scott Walter. Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. That brings us to the end of the action agenda. I guess I just wrap up by saying, you know, the, the, the approved motion doesn't end things. This is just the beginning. Communication is going to be key. Kim and I are talking about some com communication strategies rolling forward, including the video. For the public, we chatted about last time, a couple open houses, uh, board members, keep this in your back pocket, going out to your local town board meetings and uh, discussing the issue and the need for additional revenue here at the school. Um, We'll be talking about this certainly right through the end of March, in April. Um, but, you know, it's hard. We're, we're talking about this as a school board, but every board member is also a taxpayer in this district, right? So these impacts are not entirely external to those at the table. Uh, but I think we all value education and understand school budgets well enough to understand this is where we've been left by a legislature that seemingly does not value public school education. The flatline state funding and all the voucher program have put us and all these other schools in a terrible position. And I think we're trying to make the best decisions possible in that environment. So thanks everybody. One last motion to be made tonight. Adjourn. Second. Motion by Isaac, second by Peggy to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just as in part of the meeting, but keep in mind this this election is in April, not too far into April. And if we're gonna get out to town boards like we did with the pool referendum, you need to be thinking ahead of what your local town board meetings are and stuff because you need to be there in March.